A car starts from rest at time equal to zero and accelerates as shown in the graph. Find its velocity at. So let's just go and see where must we find its velocity at time equal to four. So if we look at the graph, we see it's the acceleration um, versus time graph, acceleration versus time. And uh, here we notice that for the first one, two, three, four seconds, it is accelerating at a constant one meters per second squared. Okay, so this is what we must uh, do to find the velocity at, and according to them, time four. So after four seconds, and it's had a uniform uh, acceleration during that time. So what we do is what we always do is we start by just writing out our stock taking. So um, what do we have? Do we have acceleration? Yes, we have acceleration is one meters per second squared. Okay, it says a car starts from rest. So in other words, we have initial velocity. And initial velocity is zero meters per second since from rest means um, it is not moving at all. Okay, um, do we have, what else do we have? We are asked to find the future velocity. That's what we want to work out. And what is the other one? I wonder if you can figure out. It is the change in time. Okay, the change in time is between four seconds and zero seconds. So we take the new minus the old to find the change in time. And that gives us simply just four seconds. That's how long this acceleration has been um, going on. So one, two, three, four seconds. So looking at what we are given, we see we have our acceleration, initial velocity, we need future velocity and change in time. Um, we're given so when we choose our formula it must obviously be a formula that contains all of these values and this is the one that we see has acceleration future velocity that we want initial velocity that we want and change in time this one can work however there's another one and that's actually this one these two equations are actually exactly the same in this one we have just uh, future velocity solved and in that one, we have acceleration solved. Now, since we want future velocity, why not use the easier formula where it's already solved? So now we do our stock taking. Remember, use only standard metric units and leave unknown values blank. So we don't have average velocity. We have initial velocity is zero. Okay, future velocity we have as that's the one we want to calculate the change in displacement. We don't know change in time. We do know acceleration. We know as one meters per second okay and this one seems to be actually quite easy let's see future velocity or sorry velocity is equal to zero plus and now our acceleration is one times four seconds let's preview to see if that's correct and now to solve this one okay 0 plus 1 times 4 is simply 4. So my velocity after 4 seconds is 4 meters per second squared. Uh, only to the power of negative 1, sorry. Okay, so there we go. 4 meters per second to the power of negative 1. Um, there's a second part to this question. Sorry, it's numbered A. It should be B. Okay, time is equal to 9. What will be the velocity... The future velocity find its velocity when time is equal to 9 in other words when we are at t9 now what's important to know is that all of these equations that we are um, we derived earlier is based on uniform acceleration what that means is that acceleration didn't change and here we can see but acceleration did change between this step and this step acceleration changed which means that we can't go and use the information in the previous system we have to stick to the information where the um, average or the acceleration was actually constant and all that that is going to mean is that um, we have a new set of values and what are those values well now we have that acceleration is actually equal to 5 meters per second. Our initial velocity is what are we traveling at at time equal to 4. We calculated that in our previous question. We were traveling at 4 meters per second. Okay, That's at time 
four. So that's the only um, previous piece of information I'm allowed to use and that's because that's the information at the end of this time and the information at the end of this time is the information at least for velocity at the beginning of that time. Okay. Uh, future velocity is again what we need to go and calculate and the change in time this time is one two three four five seconds okay or another way of doing it is nine minus the four the old sorry the new minus the old nine seconds minus four seconds will also give me five seconds okay and with that in mind we can go substitute into our future value formula where we have that future value is initial value plus a times delta t that is the same formula that we're going to use because it, we have the same information just different values for each so my initial velocity is this time uh, sorry 4 so we have initial velocity is 4 meters per second plus the acceleration is now 5 meters per second and that is happening for 5 seconds and that gives us 5 times 5 is 25 plus 4 is 29 meters per second and all of this information will be entered the same way as the previous one